Step 4. Quantum solution. In the previous step, we have presented the wrong predictions of classical electromagnetic theory about the photoelectric effect. Now it's time to actually see how to fix all these problems and to see how we have to adjust our understanding of electromagnetic radiation. This explanation is due to Einstein, which he published in his 1905 paper and later received a Nobel Prize for. That just shows you how revolutionary this thinking was, even though in this step we will see that it's actually quite simple to understand. So, what was Einstein's strategy? He decided to use Planck's quantum hypothesis and treat light and electromagnetic waves in general as a stream of quanta, rather than a simple wave. Later, this stream of quanta, or the quanta of light, were became to known as photons. Although Einstein did not, uh, did not uh, refer to them as photons, he called them Lichtquanta. And his basic postulate is the following. He assumed that every photon has a certain amount of energy. This energy is denoted by E gamma. In physics, often we use the word Greek letter gamma for, uh, uh, to denote photons of light. And it's given by the following relationship h times nu. So it's linearly proportional to nu, which is the frequency of the radiation. And the constant of proportionality, h, is known as Planck's constant. And it's given by this tiny number, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 meters squared times kilograms per second. So you can see that one photon has this energy. Two photons will have twice the energy. That is why we say photons are quantized, or light is quantized. They always come in discrete sets of packages. But don't get confused. It doesn't mean that the frequency itself, in this case, is quantized. This frequency can be any real number. By, but by considering a single photon, we will have a certain amount of energy. Adding more photons will just multiply this energy by the number of photons. Often this expression is given in terms of the angular frequency omega, so then we have to use a different constant of proportionality given by this symbol here, read as h bar, and given by h, the Planck's constant, divided by 2 pi. So how does the photoelectric effect work with this new um, uh, explanation in mind in terms of photons? We have the following, following picture. Here on the right, this whole thing is our metal and the electron is bound inside the metal. And in order to be emitted from the metal, it must, uh, it must receive a certain amount of energy known as the work function W. This is the minimum energy that it needs to receive in order to be ejected from the metal. In comes a photon of a certain frequency uh, corresponding to, the energy, to its energy. E gamma is equal to H times nu. If this frequency or if this energy is such that E gamma, which is given by H times nu, is less than W, then nothing happens. The electron remains bound in the metal and does not get ejected. On the other hand, if the photon has high enough frequency, meaning that its energy is larger than omega, as we can see by this orange arrow here, then it has enough energy to overcome this uh, uh, binding energy given by W and gets ejected from the metal. Furthermore, the, energy, the kinetic energy of such an ejected electron is given by the following relationship, where its maximum energy is given by h nu, the energy of the photon, minus the work function uh, w. Very simple relationship indeed, but with far-reaching consequences, as we will see in the following couple of slides. Let's get back to our observations, which we use to show that classical electromagnetic understanding is not sufficient to explain the photoelectric effect. Observation 1. Dependence of photoelectron kinetic energy on intensity. What does our quantum theory tell us? It says that the kinetic energy is independent of the intensity. After all, we said or Einstein postulated that the kinetic energy, the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons, only depends on the work function, which depends on the metal, and the frequency of the incident radiation. 
So K max is equal to H nu minus W. There is no intensity dependence in his equations. And this corresponds to uh, nicely with the ob uh, observed phenomenon. So increasing the intensity has no effect on the kinetic energy. All it does, it frees more electrons because more photons are streaming into the metal. More photons are ejected, therefore higher current is produced. But even though the number of photons uh, is larger, resulting in number uh, of electrons also increasing that are being ejected, the overall kinetic energy remains the same. So we can give ourselves a little tick. The quantum prediction agrees with the observation. Let's move on to observation number two. The time interval between the incidence of light and the emission of photoelectrons. Remember, we said what we observe is that this uh, happens instantaneously, regardless of the intensity, in contradiction to our classical understanding. In Einstein's picture, this is also true. Photon transfers its whole energy instantaneously to the electron. The photon comes at a certain energy, and as soon as it hits the electron, that all of that energy gets transferred to the electron. So there is no time delay between turning on the light and the photons being ejected, provided that we are over the cutoff frequency. So again, the quantum prediction agrees with the observation. So that's two out of four that we managed to get correct this time. Let's move on to the third observation, the dependence of ejection of electrons on the light frequency. And here we see again, in order for the uh, electron to be ejected from the metal, it must receive at least energy given by the work function W, meaning that the energy of the incoming photon must be at least given by this amount corresponding to the work function. So there is a clear cutoff frequency. As we said in the previous couple of slides, if the energy of the photon is below this frequency, it corresponds to energy which is less than W, meaning the electron does not get ejected. So clearly from Einstein's theory, uh, we, the, um, the cutoff frequency emerges very naturally. And again, quantum prediction agrees with the observation. Let's move on to our final observation, the dependence of electron kinetic energy on the light frequency. We said that classically there should be no dependence, but this is not what we observed in the actual experiment. Quantum prediction is the following. High frequency photon has more energy, but the W, the work function, is the same. Therefore, the kinetic energy increases because the incoming photon has a higher energy. Again, it agrees with the observation very nicely. This shows the power of Einstein's genius and because he managed to satisfy all of these observations. But not only that, the true contribution of his paper and his ideas is that he managed to make a bonus fifth prediction. Namely, he said that uh, there is a linear relationship between the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons and the photon frequency, given by this simple formula. Remember, we said that in Hertz's experiment, there was a clear dependence between the frequency of the incoming light and the maximum energy, but the experiment was not good enough to actually resolve it to be a linear relationship. From Einstein's reasoning, he assumed that uh, this was true, leading to a linear relationship. So, if we plot it on a graph, where on the horizontal axis we've got frequency of the incoming radiation, nu, and on the vertical axis, we've got the maximum energy of the photoelectrons denoted by K max. We should see following straight lines. Each metal, as we said, has its own characteristic cutoff frequency, meaning the incident light must have certain minimum frequency given by this uh, intersection with the horizontal axis. For example, for metal one, it's over here. If the incident light has high frequency, then we observe electrons with a finite, with finite kinetic energy given by this orange line. And the y-intersect, if we follow this orange line, tells us about the work function for that particular metal. For metal 2, metal 3, these lines are a little bit shifted because they've got different, uh, different cutoff frequencies. But you notice that the gradient of the lines is the same. And in fact, the gradient should be given by H, Planck's constant. And this was indeed observed later 
after Einstein's uh, paper by Millikan in 1914. So, now we have a nice image and nice resolution to the problems that were discovered by the classical electromagnetic theory. In the next step, we will consider a very simple but very useful application of the photoelectric effect, and it will be in the context of detecting light and single photons. See you there.